Hi everyone, it's Paolo. All right, today is gonna to be a fantastic episode because I am gonna be talking with Oscar winner, Gina Davis. Um, hello, Beetlejuice, Thelma and Louise, A League of Their Own. I mean, she has started so many hit movies, but now today she has a new memoir out called Dying of Politeness. And let me tell you, her book is so beautiful. She's so open in it that I cannot wait to talk to her. So I'll see you guys with Gina. Spoonful of Apollo, here we go. Okay, tell me when you're good. Are you good? Are you ready, Gina? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, Gina, let's do this. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for being a guest on A Spoonful of Apollo. It is an honor to speak with you. It really is, okay? Thank you. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Okay, so I read your memoir and it is, uh, it's beautiful, it's badass, it's fun, it's inspiring, and it's heartfelt. I loved it so much and you know and I feel like so many people can relate to the concept of dying of politeness you know and a downfall of it is that you know they say with politeness is that usually it's the other people's voices who matter more than your own so how did you come around to say that your voice is important and that your story needs to be shared I mean it you know it took uh it took until now it's still you know a work in progress to um uh you know, especially if you were raised or you believe that the way for people to like you is if you give everything to them, you know, you, you don't have any needs, you don't want anything from them, you just want to make them happy. And, um, and you know, and women and a lot of, you know, a lot of people are convinced that you have to not cause any trouble, or you have to have not um, need anything from other people in order for them to like you and approve of you and my in my family was like very very extreme as you read about oh yeah in the, in the i mean not you know uh, they were very normal and kind you wouldn't when you met them you would just think oh they're very kind and they're very nice but but they took um being self-effacing mm. to an extreme you mm. know and, mm. and so that's how i you know how i came out I, I i see that and and the cover really gina it's brilliant with the bear because you know this bear represents something different to everyone else out there so i was just curious what does this bear represent to you well uh i, I wanted a, a photo on the cover that would explain the title where that would where that would let you know that this was a humorous way to express what I what I was talking about that you could die of polite well, I mean I almost did but yeah. uh but uh you know that that I'm being very you know before I get eaten by this bear I think I'll give him a little cake and a little tea and just so he feels comfortable before we uh, we do that part you know oh my god I could I was thinking for me I was like oh my god this is some relatives I'm not mentioning any names in Italy yeah. or some of my cousins or relatives but yeah I was thinking of that but beautiful beautiful um, and in the you book, know, uh, I just want to say the back cover yeah. was another idea for the front cover because I was uh, I was going to curtsy to the Grim Reaper, like you to re reap me, but thank you. How do you do? Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. I love it. Oh my God, gorgeous. Um, and in the book, you talk about like when you were going to college, and I remember yeah. that your uncle was telling your mom, "Why is she going to college? You know, it's a waste of money. She's a woman. She's gonna get married one day." But obviously, it didn't stop you because you went to college, you studied in Sweden. So, how did you going to school impact on the woman that you are today? Oh, uh, you know, going, uh, well, first going away um, to be a foreign exchange student my senior year in high school was utterly transformative, <laughs> as you can imagine. My twin boys just started college this fall, and I, I told them, it's the best. It's the best. This is where you turn into yourself. This is where you, you know, figure everything out. And, uh, uh, and you realize, oh, this is what it's like to be in charge of myself. Uh, my mom said often, when I was a kid, enjoy your childhood because it's the best time of your life. Oh. And I'd be like, it is? Yeah. Oh no, I mean, being an adult is gonna be worse than this? <laughs> so, I was so happy to see, oh no, being an adult is the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, on page 60, you wrote, you say this, you said, as a result, I worked out my own genius plan for breaking into the movies. And this is how it went. I would become a famous model first. And then people would just 
offer me the movies. Now look, you went to New York, you got you auditioned for your first movie, you got your first role in the movie um, on in Tootsie playing alongside Dustin Hoffman. Were you like, okay, my plan is like genius, like I have to keep going this way because that doesn't happen in the everyday life where people move to LA or New York to pursue their dream, you know? But it was working yeah. for you. Uh, you know, I had this um, idiotic, unshakable confidence from the beginning, from when I first decided as a little kid that I was going to be an actor, that I just would, that it would, it would work out, you know, that it would absolutely be, uh, uh, you could just do it. And my parents let me major in acting at college because they had no idea. We had nothing, no idea about anything to do with Hollywood. And if you study it, you, then you just could get to do it. And so, so yeah, I came up with that scheme. So when when my my first job was in Tootsie <laughs> and with Dustin Hoffman and Sidney Pollack directing, yep. um, partly I was like, wow. And partly I was like, well, yeah, I mean, but this is kind of what was supposed to happen. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my god, what an inspiration. And you know, you really are, oh my god, you're so beautiful and you really are so kind. I'm feeling it, I see it. I know everyone says that about you, but uh, you really are just an amazing person. So I just want to make that clear, okay? But you. you're welcome. Um, also, in the book, you were very open about being sexually harassed in the industry. And I have to thank you for that because, you know, I was sexually molested by my teacher in high school. So mm. there was just so many things that I understood and related to you. And in one incident, I think you were auditioning for Transylvania 65000. And you talked about the director. And this is what you wrote. You said, um, the director wanted me to act out that scene for my audition with him, actually sitting on his lap and shoving his face into my breast. Now, did you just want to slap him at that moment, but you knew you just couldn't because of the power he had and who he was like that? Because I was feeling for you. I was just there with you when that was happening, just by reading it. Yeah, you know, it wasn't a feeling of like, I just want to slap him uh, because that would I, I, I never would have, you know, um, at that time in my life, something like that would never, it wouldn't be an urge of mine. It would just be how can I get out of this situation? And 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 how can I get him not to do this? Because I felt in, in, inadequate to deal with the situation. You know, mm. uh, the me now or the me 10 years ago or 20 years ago would have said, oh, are you serious? Come on, <laughs> no. Uh, and uh, uh, that would have been it. But um, but he pushed and pushed and, mm. and insisted. and And I didn't feel I had a right really to mm -hmm. say uh to say no or leave mm -hmm. or or anything that um if somebody really demands something i better do it ultimately and and yeah. felt so awful about doing it mm -hmm. but uh you know so you know i i don't want to um blame myself right uh, of course for these situations because i i even say in the book you know i wish that i had been the kind of person who could little run, but it wasn't really my responsibility to exactly it wasn't my fault yeah. in other words that this was happening that's exactly how i felt with my teacher like in the time i did feel like it was my fault but as we get older and wiser and we understand this we're like wait a second for me i was just groomed in that situation it just he saw this wow. lonely kid and groomed me and it just worked for oh. him but as we get older we understand and that's i feel like what happened to you when you were uh taping one of my favorite shows of all time commander in chief Please. Madam President, I just had to say that to you. As you were, please. <laughs> um, you know, and I remember like when you went on the set and everyone was greeting each other, you all were hugging each other. I remember when you hugged the director, he said, um, he said, This is my favorite part of the day when I get to feel up to you. Oh my God, that's exactly what he said. And then you said right away, you didn't even, you just responded, you said, um, that was inappropriate. So I was right. just, so like, what, how did you get to that at that moment? So you know what, I'm going to just tell him what I'm thinking and feeling inside. Like, how did you get to that place? It was, you know, I was so happy at that moment. Mm. Uh, I was happy even that that happened because I was like, I know what to say at the exact moment. It just came out of my mouth instantly. I mean, you can probably really relate to this. That, uh, and, and part of it was because ABC had um, training. Everybody had to sit through a, like an hour training course in um, sexual harassment or, you know, uh, uh, inappropriate um treatment and part of what they said was if um if someone does something inappropriate you can either tell them directly you could say that was inappropriate mm. you can go to 
uh, one of the important people on the set, the director, the star. Mm. And, and so that meant you could come to me uh, and tell me, or you could go to human resources. So you had different levels of what you were comfortable with. So we were always saying that was inappropriate about things that weren't wow. on the set, just to be funny, yeah, you know, it yeah. became our kind of motto. And so that's why when, when he did something that was actually inappropriate, I was yes. like, that was inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, when I was reading, I was like, oh, Gina, like that's a, enough is enough. Now I'm going to stand up because that's it. So I was so proud of you. Good job for doing that, you know. <laughs> Thank and you. You're welcome. And then when you were 32 years old, I believe you won your first Oscar, um, which is crazy for Best Supporting Actress. Like, was that a part of the dream vision you had when you set yourself, I'm going to go to New York, I'm going to book a movie, and I'm going to get an Oscar? Or did the Oscar come to you because of all the work you had done prior to being nominated? Uh, you know, I hadn't really fantasized about that yet. Um, or, you know, it just hadn't been part of, I'll give me an actor and then it hadn't been like that. But I knew about them and I thought they were great. Yeah. And I thought maybe someday. And, uh, and when I actually, won I was so sure I wasn't gonna win. And when I actually did, uh, my sort of immediate reaction was, well, I got that out of the way. <laughs> kind of like, I don't have to spend my life wondering if I will ever win an Oscar because I already got one. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then I know right after that, you, you did a movie with Bill Murray called Quick Change. Obviously, that made a lot of press of, you know, the, what he did during the, the audition, the massage and the yelling and the screaming. And I did watch that clip of a senior hall. And I was like, I was like going crazy because honestly, Gina, I never saw that before. But when I was watching him playing with your strap and laughing and smiling after reading your book, I was just, there were so many mixed emotions for me and I wasn't even there. I'm just curious, has he apologized? Has he said, you know what? Has Bill Murray said, you know what? I'm really sorry, Gina. When you know better, you do better. And I'm sorry. Well, I never saw him again or talked to him about it. Mm. I mean, this is him learning about me that I'm talking about it. I didn't have somebody prep him that it was, it was and because and, and people have singled it out as something very because it's a, he's a you know very famous person or whatever but it's just the reason i put it in the book was about my reaction exactly to, you know that that i mean it's important step in my my journey to badassery yeah. as i call it <laughs> uh to have that important incident where again i wasn't able to defend myself right uh, and and where somebody did something incredibly inappropriate that um, should have had a very different outcome than yeah. it did. I, I thank you for being so open. And then when you get to the part of Thelma and Louise, I was like, here we go with one of our favorite movies. And I loved, I loved how passionate you were that you needed to be part of this film, even though this film wasn't even released. You didn't know how well it was going to do because you made your agent call them every week saying, oh, I need to be part of this, that you wanted to meet with them. And obviously it finally happened. So what what determination, where where did that come in for you that you said, I need to be part of this, not knowing how successful this movie was going to be? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. None of us had any idea um, whether it was going to even be popular. Anybody's going to see it. It was a small budget and maybe people won't like that we, what we do at the end. And uh, um, but it was the best script I'd ever read. And I didn't care which part I played. Yeah, I know you didn't care. <laughs> I did not care. I just wanted to be in this movie. I was, and I was obsessed with it. Yeah, and and that I got to was wow. like was a, such an amazing blessing. Wow. You know, I could sit here and talk about your roles for hours and hours, but you know, you played a professional athlete, played a CIA assassin, you played a pirate captain, you played the president of the United States. Did you deliberately pick these roles to remind everyone that a woman can be in all of these spaces or did it just happen, these roles coming to you? Uh, uh, for the most part, it just happened. I mean, Thelma and Louise did not just happen. I had to really right. pursue it. But um, I'm incredibly fortunate that I get to play all the, I mean, even when I hear you say it, it's like, who gets to do all those oh. things, you know? And uh, and I did, and, and they they just, came my way. And also, I have to say, I don't know if I really said this in the book, but um, that I got to play these badass parts when I didn't feel like I was, you know, that I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was already embodying that. So they said, hey, yeah, wow. she's a little badass. Let's get her. So I just was very fortunate. I never got typecast. And I got to do 
period pieces and, yep. and sci-fi and horror and comedy and everything, everything. You're an icon. You're an icon. Just, no, you got it. Just for one second, take it in, take it in, okay? Um, well, yes, you're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. So my last question to you is that, you know, I know in 2004 you opened your institute, the Gina Davis Institute of Gender Media. And I know it started from when your daughter was two years old and you were watching her first cartoon with her and right away you noticed you that there were barely female characters in that cartoon. Now look, Gina, it's one thing to notice something, but it's another thing to take action. Obviously, right. you took action. Right. Where does that motivation, there's something in you that says, I'm going to try and change this and fix this. Where does that come from? Does it come from your parents? Does it come from someone in your life? Like, where do you get that? Uh, partly from my parents, partly from my dad, that um, mm -hmm. he could do anything. And he was very modest, but he could invent and fix and do everything. Very smart. And uh, we just set out to do it, you know, if he, oh. if he decided. And uh, well, I did it because I felt like I knew the way to do it, that I had, that I had an idea about um, what technique would work to get the change to happen. I, I thought it was incredibly important that the change happened, that mm -hmm. we stop teaching kids from minute one to have unconscious gender bias. But um, but the idea I had was, I, I figured out that it was unconscious bias, mm -hmm. that these people who love kids didn't realize they were leaving out so many female characters. And if I brought them the data, they would say, what? And that's exactly what happened. Wow. is that they were shocked to find out what they were doing and uh and we've made you know incredible progress since then on what kids see so wow. uh i'm excited about that it just it's just like i'm gonna do this i'm <laughs> gonna go big you know that's that's how i roll <laughs> i mean it's just because that data says it all you can't deny what the fact is right there on that sheet so when the you know the creators of these networks see it they're like oh wait a second yeah there needs to be a change because this is this is i mean we're in 2022 this is not right this shouldn't be right. like this you know right right God. exactly you know i just you know not only have you inspired like girls and women out there but you've inspired people in the lgbtq plus community and you know me being a gay boy you know just seeing your movies and now you're on our show I just like this is a dream moment for us because I have so much love and admiration and respect for you, especially that you were so open in your memoir. It is one of the most open memoirs I've ever read and I couldn't put it down. I read it in a day and a half. So I have to thank you. I have to thank you for 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 sharing your story with all of us. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. Hey, do you think anybody there's any drag queens who pretend to be me? Oh my god. You come look, we're in Chicago. You come to Chicago, I'll take you to Roscoe's. There's a lot of drag queens who I see as Gina Davis, okay? Oh, oh, that would be so bad. I was, next time I see one, I'm gonna send a picture to your team, like, oh, here's a Gina Davis over here, okay? Oh. I would love to see that. Okay, Thank so, you. you know, Gina, what we wanted to do, because this is such a big moment for our show, we, in honor of you, we would love to donate $500 to the Gina Davis Institute of oh, Gender right. and Media. Yeah, so we're going to do that Thank for you. Thank you. Oh, it's the first time I got a big check. <laughs> <That's> a big <laughs> yes. on TV, you know. Thank you so much. Yes. That's really wonderful. Thank you, Paolo. I no, love oh, it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's a little, you know, it's a, we're a little web show, but it's an honor of you. This means a lot to us. You're changing the world. You're trying to fix it. And we want to be a part of that. So I say from the bottom of my heart, Gina Davis, thank you. Thank you so much, because I will remember this moment forever, OK? Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so great to meet you. Thank Hi, you. You're welcome. So great to meet you, too, OK? Have a okay. lovely, have a lovely weekend. And congratulations again on this beautiful book, OK? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, All right, Gina. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, come say bye. Patrick's going to say bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> you were amazing, Gina. So thank you, okay? Yes. Thank you. So good. All right. Love you. Bye-bye, Gina. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.